Greetings, and welcome to Men's Health Week for 2021. I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we're all conducting Men's Health Week business. My name is Dr. Neil Hall from the Men's Health Information and Resource Centre at Western Sydney University. And we are funded by the Commonwealth of Department of Health to oversee Men's Health Week. I'm speaking to you from WSU, which is located on the lands of the Darek, Tharawal and Gundungurra nations. I pay respect to elders past and present and emerging. I thank them for their hospitality and safe transit across the lands and rivers on which we live, move and work, and extend that respect to all First Nations people who may be joining us. Now, there's no question that the last 12 months or more have been extremely difficult for the nation. Bushfires, the pandemic, floods, and the rightfully growing concern about respect for women present us with challenges for meaningfully addressing questions around the health and well-being of men and boys. I believe it's important to acknowledge the social and political context in which we are living and working and make a commitment to end unacceptable behaviour towards women, while also engage in positive strategies to improve the health of males. It's not a competition. The vital thing is for us to work together across genders, cultures and communities. Men's Health Week promotes this strengths-based approach by inviting local communities to develop local events. The umbrella theme for Men's Health Week 2021 is connecting for men's health. Appropriately, we connected with a number of organisations around the country in discussing this theme, and I was excited by the outcome. Particularly, in light of COVID, natural disasters, and social unrest, making connections will have a significant impact on the health of men and boys. Firstly, let's think about connecting with family. The family unit, and however broadly you define it, is a basis for improving male health, whether they be sons, fathers, brothers, cousins, partners. Connecting with mates is also important. And we know that research says that having three good friends will add seven years to your life. Connecting with community is another step knowing that we don't have to continue in isolation and loneliness is vital. And there are so many ways of reconnecting or connecting for the first time with community groups as a way of improving male health. Um, sport, uh, faiths, libraries, the arts are some of many examples of being able to connect with community. It's also important to be connecting with services. Now, there are always crisis phone lines available 24 seven. And we're now starting to see that other types of support services are beginning to see the importance of offering delivery that is male friendly. And whether these are the traditional health, medical and support services, or whether they're innovative programs that are happening in the workplace. Connecting with services is important. And lastly, I just want to talk about connecting the dots. Men and boys do not maintain their health in isolation as individuals. There are many underlying social factors that contribute to poorer health and suicide. For example, unemployment, low income, relationship breakdown, loss of land and livelihood, and dispossession from land and culture. If these are things that commit to poor, contribute to poorer health, then addressing these broader issues 
can commit, c c contribute to better health as well. And we want to promote Men's Health Week to not only work with men, their families and communities, but also to help services, policymakers and funding bodies connect the dots between these broader factors and the health of men and boys. I want to thank you so much for your commitment and contribution in the men's health space over the last few years. And I trust that Men's Health Week 2021 will be another great year.